Good morning. Welcome to the Prada Museum in Madrid, Spain. We're here continue, continuing our Wednesday morning series of short conversations. And today, because we're so close to Christmas, we're going to talk about some Christmas-related iconography in this beautiful triptych by Hans Memling. I'm Whitney Dennis with the American Friends of the Prada Museum. We are a nonprofit organization dedicated to supporting the museum with as many projects as we can, alongside our sister organization, the Fundación de Amigos. And today we'll be looking at this triptych, The Adoration of the Magi, by Hans Memling. This was painted around 1470 by Memling, a Flemish artist, born in Germany and active in Bruges, where this was painted. The Prado has an amazing collection of Flemish paintings from the 15th and 16th centuries, thanks to the political, commercial, and cultural relationship between the Low Countries and the crown of Castile and Aragon, today Spain. It's a triptych, which is an object made of three panels, and these three panels feature scenes from Jesus' infancy. So in the first panel, we have the Nativity, when Jesus was born. In the second panel, we have the Adoration of the Magi with the three wise men, or the three kings, coming to bring gifts. And the third panel is the presentation of Jesus in the temple. And these subjects are great starting points for studies in iconography because they have been depicted so much in different styles and in cultural contexts. And when art historians refer to iconography, what they mean is the content, the subject matter, the visual elements and symbols, and how they are represented. And we can talk about the identification of those symbols or the evolution of how they were depicted over time. Here in the Nativity, for example, we can look at different elements like Mary, the infant Jesus, Joseph, the angels. And when we take time to notice the singularities, we can learn more about each artist, each commission, and the time period that it comes from. And this depiction of the Nativity with Mary kneeling and Jesus lying naked, uncovered on the base of her tunic is actually based on a book written in the 14th century by St. Bridget of Sweden. St. Bridget was a mystic, and she claimed to have visions of Christ. And she wrote these down, and they were published in her book called The Revelations. And one of these visions describes the birth of Christ, and it was very influential on subsequent, subsequent visual representations of the Nativity. And it said that when Mary kneeled to pray, she felt the baby move in her womb, and she immediately gave birth and began to worship the child without having changed positions. She was immediately joined by the angels, but Jesus was not present for the birth because he had just left the stable to find something to light the space. And here we see Joseph coming in again with the candle. And the candle is also a symbol for the light that was brought into the world with Jesus' birth. The ox and the donkey, the animals that we see, are also almost omnipresent in the visual tradition of the nativity scene. We can always think of the ox and the donkey in the nativity. And they were also mentioned in St. Bridget's account in other apocryphal texts, but no canonical texts, which is interesting. And Joseph is a figure that has really evolved considerably in visual terms over time, both in attitude and in his physical appearance. And sometimes in paintings, he seems distant or less central to the story. Sometimes he even seems like a caricature. And in other paintings, he can be tender and involved, like a model of paternal love. So there are a lot of different ways that Joseph can be represented. And here in these paintings, he seems like an older man and maybe even older than we typically think of images of Mary's husband. And this is because this was painted before the Council of Trent. The Council of Trent was the ecumenical council of the Catholic Church that took place in the 16th century, and it addressed different issues of teachings in the church to clarify what would be considered heresy and which doctrines and scriptures and traditions would be permitted. And it had an important effect on art. In the Council of Trent, the church decided to encourage the idea of Joseph at a more appropriate age for fatherhood. And this is why artists started to represent him younger than we see here. This is also one of the earliest depictions in Europe of the Black King. 
According to tradition, the three kings stood for the three areas of the world, Europe, Asia, and Africa, and also for the three ages of man. And when I'm looking at this painting, I also find myself interested in the structure. In this structure, both in the nativity scene and in the adoration of the Magi panels. So let's look in, in the nativity scene here. It's a dramatic temple-like structure that is halfway in ruins. And we can notice actually that this is the same space that is painted in the central panel, but seen from a different point of view. If we look at the location of the animals here, we can see that they're under this archway, right in front of these columns and this beam on the ground. And notice that we have the same elements here in the nativity. The archway, the beam, and the columns where Joseph is coming in. And we can also notice here in the nativity scene this discrete window that comes around, that it frames the painting, which corresponds to a window that we can find in the central panel. Right behind Joseph, we have the same window. And this gives us a real sense of the space, and it adds to the intimacy of the nativity as it puts us in the position of an onlooker peering in from the outside. And all this gives us the impression that the artist was really interested in, in architecture, in space, and in perspective. And speaking of architecture, let's look at the, at the details also in, in the cityscapes in the background. This is not the kind of architecture that we would see in Bethlehem, but these are, we have architecture that is contemporary to the time and the place of the painting in 15th century Flanders. And also notice the importance of the architectural elements in the third panel in the presentation of the temple inside the church where the, where the presentation is taking place. And notice the repetition of these vertical lines both in the columns and in the folds in the fabric, which really adds strength and monumentality to the scene, and especially to the figure of the Virgin Mary. In Memling's painting, we can see the influence of artists like van der Weyden and the Van Eyck brothers. And this triptych is actually based on another triptych by Roger van der Weyden that is very similar in composition. It's a really beautiful painting, and we could stay here all day looking at every single detail, but we should probably start wrapping up. Um, I encourage you to come see it in person if you can, and if you can't, then you can go to the website to find out more. I hope that you've enjoyed having a closer look at some Christmas-related iconography in this triptych by Hans Memling. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you again next Wednesday.